Hey, good morning. My name is Greg Belser, and this is Advent 2022. It's our joy to continue to think about the coming of the Savior. Today is day 26 of our 35-day reading plan. We've been focusing on the devotions in this uh, publication, Let Earth Receive Her King. The church uh, published this this year and uh, invited some 35 people from our congregation to author and participate in uh, this process. And today we consider Philippians chapter 2, verses 1 to 11. And the author of our devotion this morning is the one and only Mary Ann Park. And uh, we love Mary Ann. We're thankful. She teaches math. And that's a strike against her. But other than that, we don't know a thing in the world wrong with her. So we love her. She is the wife of Ivan, of course, who uh, we all know and love. So we're thankful for Marianne for her devotion. We'll get to that momentarily. First, we should read Philippians 2, 1 through 11. Uh, most folks don't associate uh, Philippians 2 with the Christmas narrative but you would be mistaken if you don't do that. So let's uh, find out why, let's read it. So if there is any encouragement in Christ, any comfort from love, any participation in the spirit, any affection and sympathy, complete my joy by being of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility, count others more significant than yourselves. Let each of you look not only to his own interest, but also to the interest of others. Have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself by taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men, and being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Well, here is Mary Ann's devotional. Paul was in prison. He was joyful despite his circumstances because he had learned how to be joyful, that according to Philippians 4.12. He exhorted the Philippians to humility and unity and used Jesus as his example. What we read in Philippians 2, verses 3 and 4, is countercultural and certainly against what our flesh desires we are selfish, always have been, always will be. What is the secret to overcoming selfishness? First, according to Philippians 2, 3, with humility, consider one another as more important than yourselves. We all think we are more important. We are not. We are not to merely look out for our own interest, but, quote, also for the interest of others close quote, Philippians 2, 3, and 4. Second, we must humble ourselves. Jesus modeled that for us. He could have stayed with God in heaven, or he could have come to earth and been powerful and famous because he was God. He did not choose either of those options. Instead, his advent displays how he humbled himself, being a servant on earth and dying a shameful death on a cross. Why? This is what God asked of him. More than anything, Jesus wanted to be obedient to the Father. Advent is about the coming of Christ. We see such love in his coming to us, becoming like us. He gave us not only a model of humility, unselfishness, and unity, but also a model of love. His is the very promise of love. His love is divine, perfect, and complete. If we know him, we can love like he does, according to Galatians 5, 14. Let us practice unselfishness today and let our joy be seen. 
Amen. Thank you, Mary Ann, for that devotion. We are grateful. Uh, this passage is so helpful for us. Uh, clearly, it is about the humanity of Christ, his becoming a man uh, on earth and fulfilling the plan of God for his life to go to the cross and die. But all of that, of course, made possible by his incarnation, his becoming uh, a man by means of the virgin birth, by means of uh the birth in Bethlehem and his subsequent uh, life experiences in Galilee and northern Israel. So we're thankful for the Savior, his willingness to empty himself, to lay aside his glory as the Son of God and come for us. I hope today, as you think of the coming of Christ, you will remember his humiliation, his humility for you and uh, his willingness to come because of his great love, as Mary Ann pointed out. Well, the Lord bless you. Let's pray as we begin our day. God, we thank you for uh, the reminder of the love of Christ and the submission of Christ to you. We pray that we would go and copy, emulate his example, that we would, Father, be faithful Likewise, in our relationships, counting others more important than ourselves. Help us to be servants, even as our Savior was our servant and is our servant even now. Even now. Continue to give grace for us to follow you and follow you well. We love you this morning. In Christ's name we ask it. Amen. Well, I hope you have a good day. Looking forward to Sunday, Christmas morning. God bless you.